Hi, welcome to my new series aimed at beginners all about how to get to know how to use your DSLR. I often get asked by people to give them lessons about how to use their DSLR to set it up correctly and get the results that they want. And hopefully by following this series, you'll get that information too. In this video, I'm going to talk about focusing and making sure that we get that right. Now in the introduction, I did mention auto and this refers to auto exposure, which is a completely different system than autofocus, but it's one that I often see get confused. And most modern cameras have a fairly reliable autofocus system, and there's very little reason for a beginner to turn the autofocus off. It's vital to get your images sharp, and to achieve this, what you need to do is make sure that you've got a proper focus lock before taking the shot. Now to do this, what you do is you half press the shutter until you get an audible warning, maybe a beep or some kind of indication on the display or viewfinder and it's usually uh, a square turning green or a little circle down in the bottom corner. If you're not sure where this indication is on your camera then have a quick look in the manual but once you have the focus lock established then you press the shutter all the way down and that will take the shot. So what happens if you've done all of this, but your images still aren't in sharp focus? Well, there could be several reasons why this might be the case. The first thing to be aware of is where your camera is actually focusing. Now on the back of the display or in the viewfinder, there'll be a rectangle or a series of rectangles. And that is the point where the camera focuses. Now in my next video, I'm going to cover a more advanced focusing um, tutorial which will tell you how to change those groups of focusing points and move them about to get the best shot. But for now, just be aware of where those rectangles are because that is the point where your camera will focus. The second reason for blurred images is camera shake. And this is a very common problem for a lot of people, but I'm gonna give you some tips about how to try and remedy this. Probably the most effective way of reducing camera shake is to make sure that the camera is on a really good sturdy tripod. That way you'll prevent the camera from moving during the shot and you'll get a much sharper image. This is even more important with a long lens like this one. The added focal length magnifies any camera shake that you introduce when pressing the shutter button. One way around this is to use a cable release like this one because this allows you to take the shot without actually touching the camera at all. And it doesn't even matter if you haven't got a cable release. One thing a lot of people forget is that you've got a self timer on the camera. It's not just for taking selfies. If you set the self timer for two seconds, press the shutter button, the camera will have stabilized and stopped moving by the time the shutter fires. If you don't happen to have a tripod to hand, then just find something else to rest on to help keep the camera steady. Maybe a fence post. Or a wall. It's quite useful to have a bean bag to hand, especially if you're taking pictures out of your car. There are some occasions when you just have to handhold. There's just no way around it. But in this situation, there are still things that you can do to help reduce camera shake. A lot of cameras and lenses have some kind of stabilization built into them. There's lots of different names for this. Sometimes it's called vibration reduction, image stabilization, um, anti-shake. But if you have this as part of your system, turn it on, it will help. One word of warning though, just make sure that this is turned off if your camera is on a tripod, because what the anti-shake will try and do is try and correct for shake that's not there and actually end up adding shake. Next, it's important to hold your camera steady to make sure it's as stable as possible. So take your left hand and rest the lens on top of it. Then the right hand goes onto the grip and the shutter. This gives the camera lots of stability. Next, you take your elbows and put them into your sides and lock them there and then bring the camera up to your forehead, just over your eye. And this, this makes three points of contact to allow the camera to be as stable as possible. Then make sure that you have a good stance. Set your feet apart, 
lock your elbows in, camera to your, your forehead, and now you're very stable before taking the shot. The moment before you press the shutter, it's important to exhale. That way you're not holding any tension in your body. Then finally, don't jab your finger at the button because this will move the camera as well. Even ever so slightly will be enough to create a blurred image. Instead, roll your finger onto the shutter very carefully so the shutter fires without introducing any movement to the camera. There are two techniques that I often see that should be avoided. I think they originate from either using the rear screen for taking pictures or by using mobile phones. But the first is holding the camera in the right hand but using the left hand to zoom. And what this does is it means that the camera has very little stabilization and the left hand moving can actually move it even more. The second is holding the camera at arm's length to use the rear screen for taking pictures. And this is even worse as there is even more movement that can be added from your arms moving. My next video is going to cover more advanced focusing and in my beginner series I'm going to tackle how to get correct exposure by controlling the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. If you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure that you stay up to date with all of my content. But for now, stay safe and I'll see you soon.